Have you ever wondered, what exactly do you do in art school? Well, in this video, I'll show you a real life project I completed for a branding class in art school as a graphic design major. I'll preface this video by saying it's been a little over nine years since I've graduated from art school, so things may have changed. But the fundamentals of a branding or graphic design class pretty much remain the same. You'll go through the same creative process for a project I'll outline here. For this class, which at the time was called Identity Level 1, there was essentially three parts to this project. The first was to create an identity for a place and create a brand standards guide for it. The second was to create an identity for a thing or an object and the brand standard guide to go along with it. And the third was to create an identity for yourself in how you package the entire thing. Along with the final, we also had to share our creative process journal where we documented our creative process all along the way throughout the semester. Let's open up this book first and I'll show you exactly what I did for this class. So this is the first page and as you can see, from the date, uh, the first class was on September 8th, 2009. So this is week one lecture notes. The purpose of the process journal is to take notes during lectures, but also to capture the process. So the way that scheduling worked for classes at my art school is we would meet for 15 weeks once a week for about three hours. So that's why there's you know a week difference here. Continuing here, following into the third week lecture notes, we would also paste in handouts that we were given. So here at about the third week, this is uh, one of the assignments, which is to create an audience profile. You'll see later on in the final visual standards book how this turns out, but this was a guide on how to go about thinking of those. And here is how I started to put together my audience profiles for the first part of the project, which, which was to create an identity for a place, and I chose the Enchanted Forest. We needed to work on creating basically profiles for eight different people that would be going to the place that we were creating an identity and logo and visual system for. And probably about into the fourth week is when we got into the actual logo process. And the way that we were taught to do this was to think in themes and architecture. So what that means is for the place that we were designing for, think of three different themes that we could bucket our different logo ideas. And then the three different types of logos, meaning icon, a logo type, or a combination of the two. So for me, for the Enchanted Forest, the themes that I thought of were youth, fantasy, and royalty. And then we would take those three themes and basically a word dump of all the ideas that anything that popped into your mind that could potentially be a logo idea later on. So if you're designing a logo, this is a helpful way to get started. Before narrowing in on any visual direction, you really want to come up with themes and think about the concept behind the logo that you're designing. And so from here, the assignment is to create 30 plus loose refined logo concepts for each of these themes. So here's the first page of me starting to sketch out loose ideas that fall within one of these themes and all the different ideas that evolved from it. You can see how I'm playing around with ideas that could be a logo on its own, playing around with having the E from Enchanted Forest. This is the exploration phase, so it's all about coming up with a lot of ideas. And diving into more sketches. So as I said, the assignment was to do 30 plus sketches for each of the theme directions. And I definitely took that to heart and there's just pages and pages of sketches as you'll see. There's some notes here, little stars. Um, these were from the instructor when we were reviewing one-on-one -on -one and he was picking out ideas he felt could evolve well for the logo. So a lot of monograms here, these elements of royalty, 
again, more sketches. So you, you know, I'm, I'm incorporating wings and flying, which were some of the things that I mentioned in my themes list. These are the more fantasy themed sketches. So thinking about trees and birds and loose elements, a lot of loose sketches here. Continuing with similar themes, I had mentioned dandelion, so you'll, you'll see a lot of these elements coming in, really focusing on the lowercase e, stars, diamonds, and combining e and f in this script, or combining it with the entire name, like here, Enchanted Forest. More sketches. I, I don't really remember where this came about, but it's probably just something that evolved from other sketches. And you can see the elements of the wings here. Again, creating something that's more of like a monogram. This could stand on its own, or maybe something like this that has the full name. These are some of my more favorite sketches that you'll see in the next couple of pages. They're more detailed, more thought out. I really loved how ornate some of these became. And yeah, this is this starts to you'll see as this you'll see as the process unfolds that this is where the magic really starts to happen. And again, these are more notes from the instructor who was also drawn to some of these sketches. I remember talking through this keyhole concept with my instructor and how my idea behind it was that a key or a door, you're unlocking your mind to another place and time. So when someone is coming to the enchanted forest, they're opening the door to this enchanted land that they will be at for the day with their family. Continuing on with the keyhole concept, so a lot of iterations. Again, these are ones that the instructor was drawn to and just to explore more. Diving into week four lecture notes, week five. At this point, we were starting to refine ideas. So taking one of our concepts and creating more ideations more sketches and these were I believe on these were I believe on tracing paper so I scanned them in and taped them in here. So again you can see how the royalty, the ornate, that enchanted medieval type look is really evolving in these sketches. Here I'm playing around with the entire name even started to bring in some type just to see how that would pair with a ornate E and like this hand lettered vibe with you know typography just kind of seeing where that would unfold. More sketches, more refined sketches and again thought about pairing you know this script EF with like a modern sans serif seeing what that looks like. This logo had a very youthful playful feel to it which was one of the things that I was going for. Again you can see how the keyhole concept continue to evolve. And these were more sketches in that same realm. So here's the keyhole concept, but then I was also thinking about bringing in a door and how much of the door would you be bringing in and which elements. So these ones are becoming more detailed, which is probably more detailed than you would want for a logo. For example, these were becoming too door heavy. This is more of an illustration than a logo and it was starting to lose the concept that I was going for. But this continued to go in the direction that you'll see for the final logo. More explorations and more. We used a lot of tracing paper so that you could trace one idea, change something about it, trace it again, do another variation. It's a way to help you create more versions without redrawing the same logo over and over again. So a little tip when you are sketching out logo concepts. You can see how this is more in the direction of the final logo. More variations, sticking with E and F versus full name. More sketches.
This is getting very close to the end and starting to incorporate the type. These are including ornate details, kind of using the keyhole more as an inverse shape. So instead of that being the so instead of the keyhole being positive, you see it by the negative space these other elements create around it. So you see how much of variety you can create within one concept and one direction and how there's really so many directions a logo or any kind of design can take. So don't stop at your first idea. You just want to continue to exhaust all the ideas that come to mind. Continue sketching, continue exploring, because you never know when you'll end up with a better idea. Here I am narrowing in on the what will end up being the final shape for the keyhole concept. So I'm playing around with whether it's an outline or how much of it I'm filling in. And again, these are scans from tracing paper, playing with borders, and now starting to bring it into the computer. So redrawing the shapes in Illustrator, starting to add in type. Here, these are just scans of my own lettering, but eventually I do bring in type. I remember when I was showing these to the instructor, one of the things he said was this was starting to look like a bite out of an apple. So end up refining that so it looks a little bit less like biting into an apple. And I think that helps when you look at ones like this where you have all the different shapes. It helps take your eye off of that. Bringing in type on arches. You can create a lot more options when you start to digitize things because you can swap out type and add different borders and you can see how it evolves and this is very close to the final logo. Some notes from the instructor saying simplify the shape so it doesn't look like an apple bite, playing with the contrast. At this point, I'm starting to bring in color and play around with how that affects the logo. So for some of these, I have two to three different colors per logo. I'm playing around with golden, yellow, orange colors, reds, purples, earthy greens for the type. More color studies. Playing around with lighter colors. When I look back at this, I definitely feel like there's too much color going on and you'll see it gets much simpler in the final. More lecture notes, here we are in week six. Week seven, so at this point we're starting to put together the visual brand standard guides for the place. So you can see how I'm sketching out the different pages and sections. Getting into week eight, so here we're starting to think about the identity for the self. So how are we gonna package all of these things? Because remember I said there was essentially three parts to the final project. Creating an identity, logo, visual system for a place, and also for an object, and then how you package it is your identity for yourself. Here are taping in more handouts that I was given throughout the class. Once we finished the identity for the place, it was time to shift gears into the object or the thing. And for my project, I chose the brand Pelican to rebrand. This is getting into the history of the Pelican brand. More handouts from the class. This is an exercise for the brand grid. Basically for the Pelican brand, choosing nine different photos, choosing an object, architecture, texture, a person, animal, activity, chair, food, drink, and these are images that we feel embodies the brand, as is before and then the after with what my goal is for the rebrand. So you can see on here on this page, these were the nine images, the architecture, the texture, the person, the object, a chair. This is what I felt the Pelican brand was before. And then here's where I wanted to take the brand. So something much more colorful and youthful playful and really attracting a younger audience of artists. So just as I had the logo process for the first part of the project, going into the same process for 
the Pelican brand. So coming up with three different themes and then a word dump of everything that you can think of within that theme. And here are some sketches for those ideas. You can see the kite, elements of the dandelion, how that plays around with the word, creating these snowflake-like patterns, playing with the idea of stencil, balloons, kind of like when you're in third grade and you're learning how to write. That was the inspiration behind the script on these lines. More abstract sketches of flying elements, bringing in patterns and shapes, umbrellas, and different ways that that might look. Hot air balloons, balloons, someone holding a balloon, playing around with that shape with an exclamation mark. This water droplet idea, which you'll see evolve. Playing around with positive and negative shapes. Sketches with birds. Bringing in a Ferris wheel. More ideas on the balloon. More exploration. Playing around with those abstract shapes, focusing on just the P. You can see I did a lot of exploration on the balloon and kite idea and the umbrella and just really finding ways to abstract it. These ones I'm focusing more on the whole and name. These are notes from the instructor. So he was, he was drawn to this idea. Uh, originally you saw from a previous sketch that it was like a balloon, but then I turned it upside down and it was more of a ink droplet. And so that was one that he was drawn to. Same idea, but adding a P into it. Um, note here that these were starting to look like the Girl Scout logo. So playing around with the idea of a balloon and ink drops. And the last few sketches. And here are some excerpts from what would be the final visual standards guide. A timeline of the company. So at this point, I'm taking that idea of the ink drop and refining it. So we have one concept, one idea, and now it's just creating many different versions, modifying it slightly, trying to get the perfect logo. So you can see how some of these are very similar, some are very different. You can see how, again, I was playing with tracing paper and marker and just drawing over it to create new variations. This kind of looks like the yin-yang sign. Some that are more symmetrical, less abstracting it a little bit more. And then refining some of the other concepts as well. This was for the youthful theme. Whereas the ink drop was for the creativity and expression theme. More tracing paper sketches. Need to retake that. So again, more using more tracing paper to create variations. Here, starting to pair it with the full name and where would that live, whether it's underneath, centered, or to the right. Mm -hmm. 
more sketches for the other concept that I was still exploring. And here are some notes where I'm thinking about the creating the identity for the self element. So I would have both the visual standards for the place and the thing, and then I would enclose it in a case of some sort that I ended up creating by hand. And with that ink drop concept, I ended up starting to evolve it into an abstract version of the fountain pen nib. So you can see how that is starting to evolve here, which ends up being the final logo. So here I was actually playing around with ink to see if that would give me more interesting ink droplet shapes or texture. More tracing paper sketches, so taking one and just modifying it slightly, playing around with the shapes, looser organic versus harder, sharper lines and corners. Some of these were starting to look a little bit like fire, so keeping that in mind. Another sketch on how that final packaging was going to look. So it would be this hard case that just folds over the two visual standard books and this belly band, rubber band that would keep it in place. So over here, you can see how that concept starts to look as I'm bringing it to the computer and I'm drawing the lines in Illustrator, starting to pair it with type. And you always want to start in black and white because a logo should work in black first before you ever introduce color. More explorations in black and white. And then here I am starting to bring in color. So whether I'm just focusing on one golden yellow orange color for the nib, do I want to bring in something like a turquoise or a blue? to add kind of like that hint of drawing ink. Again, playing around with different color combinations, type explorations. Actually, I'm not really sure what's different. But, I mean, here there's, I'm playing around with having this shape inside, but they're like really small variations. Here the text is centered to the right. And so by this point I've narrowed in on this typeface and now I'm just exploring whether I want it to be monochromatic or I wanted to divide up the color from the logo to the type. These are early spreads from the brand standards. The timeline and history and how I wanted to lay that out. And one final element of the identity for self was creating a letterhead system and writing a letter to a potential employer. So we had to choose companies that we potentially wanted to work for. So I guess in my case I was choosing Paramount Pictures, Virgin Record Label, and a design studio in Singapore, and this is some of their work. And so I didn't actually want to work in Singapore, but this just was an exercise to get us to start thinking about where we wanted to work once we were done with art school, which at this point was about three more years away for me. This is another art studio, Perky Brothers. I'm actually not sure if they're still around anymore, but here's some examples of their work at the time. So this was an example of the letter. Designing the letterhead however you want, which also would be a business card as well, and drafting up a letter that you would write, kind of like pitching yourself to work for them. So this was the first draft and some notes from the instructor. He liked that I had a very specific reference to a project that they worked on, um, and just some simple grammar things. So this was a cream paper. I also tried it with a brown and a gray and more of a white. And these are some thumbnails of the layout for 
the final brand standards guide for the place, Enchanted Forest. This is my own personal photography. Some of this is uh, some of this is film photography and some digital. And then getting into the standards guide for Pelican. It actually ended up changing a lot. It looked like I was using this torn paper design element, but I didn't end up going with that in the final. Instead, I went more with this abstract ink imagery. And that's it for this process journal. There was just a couple of pages left. Some more handouts about how to create the process journal. And then this is also basically a syllabus of the entire class project. And so this is how the final packaging turned out that I mentioned that I created myself. So it has this belly band that would go over the top to enclose it, but it's a hard case cover that you would open. There's a photo here, but it just houses the two books. So it's just a hard case and sized perfectly to fit the brand standard guides. And this is how the final brand standard guides turned out for the place, the Enchanted Forest. You can see this is the final logo. Story isn't part of the logo, I just added that for the title. And like I said, this is black and white film photography that I shot myself. This is digital, it's like a very blurry photo. I've come a long way. <laughs> I'm getting into the contents page, so everything that's included. An introduction to the Enchanted Forest. This is the history and the timeline of the Enchanted Forest from when it was created in 1930 all the way to present day. And this is how those audience profiles turned out that I mentioned before. So here ended up going with six different people that I was targeting that would enjoy going to the Enchanted Forest and also giving them names. So things like Soaring Firefly, Social Bunny, Enlightened Owl, Lethargic Sloth, Respected Lion, and Chirpy Squirrel. A chapter page, now we're diving into the actual logo. And this is the final logo. I ended up going with this golden color and a deep dark purple for the keyhole and the typography. These are alternate versions of the logo. So this is the full color version, a black and white version, and an inverse reverse black version. Always need to think about spacing. So when you're adding your logo to supporting design materials, keep in mind this kind of spacing. And you have to use a certain element as the X. So for me, I was using the X height of the type as X for spacing. Examples of what not to do with the logo. These are always kind of fun to make. Basically, you just try to screw up the logo as many times as possible and be like, this is not okay. <laughs> Another divider page. And these are the final colors. I named them Majestic Purple and Discovery Gold. And these are the PMS, CMYK, RGB, and Hex colors. Getting into the typography. So the main Enchanted Forest typeface is in Adobe Garamond. And then a supporting typeface that I chose was Chalet. The photographic style. So I ended up deciding on using a black and white grainy film photography and pairing that with soft focus atmospheric shots. Getting into brand extensions. So basically this was seeing how the brand could live on in other elements. For example, having the logo mocked up on a sign above the door entry into the Enchanted Forest. And you could choose whatever brand extensions you wanted, but they should make sense for your brand. I chose 
custom made gates and limited edition custom keys. And, and that's it for this one. The visual standards guide for Pelican. So this is the final logo in black. And again, you can see how I carried that ink concept throughout the design of the layout. The contents, chapter sections, so starting with elements of the brand, a little introduction, and into the future of where I wanted to take the Pelican brand. Here we have the timeline and history of the brand. And this is from that brand grid exercise, so remember choosing those different photos and objects, architecture, things that you felt represented the brand. So this was the before image, but then going into the new brand image of where I wanted to take it. Diving into the identity logo elements, and this is the final logo. So on the front you saw the black and white version, and this is the full color version. Again, spacing. So for X, I use the height of the P and use that as a guideline for how much space should go around the logo. Alternate versions of the logo, full color, black and white, and reversed out. Unacceptable uses of the logo. So again, this is things you can't do, like swapping the color, outlining it. Pretty obvious things, but you just never know what someone's going to try and do with your logo. The logo colors, and I titled them Radiant Orange and Expressive Teal. So the typeface I use in the logo is called Britannic Bold, and I used Trade Gothic as a supporting typeface getting into those brand extensions. So this is Pelican's past. So thinking about things like how the logo would be mocked up on an ink bottle. The future of the Pelican brand. So here's a mock-up of this new modern art store and the logo mocked up on the storefront. Also thinking about creative tools that would be sold in this new art store. And that's it. If you enjoyed this type of video where I walked you through something I created for art school, you might also be interested in seeing a flip through of my senior portfolio. When you study graphic design at an art school, basically every class you are doing is setting you up for this final portfolio class. And essentially, this is what's going to help you get a job as a designer in the real world. So if you're curious what my senior portfolio looked like, check out this video next or click the link in the description below.